Behold the epitome of naval armament, the Russian Kirov-class battlecruiser, standing as the most heavily weaponized class of ships in the entire world. This formidable vessel boasts nuclear-powered capabilities, rendering it exceptionally stealthy, particularly when juxtaposed with the conventionally powered Russian aircraft carrier Admiral Kuznetsov, notorious for its exhaust smoke visible from the reaches of space. While the American classification designates this marvel as a battle cruiser, the Russians casually dub it a cruiser. This nomenclature aligns seamlessly with their singular aircraft carrier's type as well. It's almost comical to think of this behemoth as a mere corvette, Yuri's fishing boat perhaps. But beyond the humor, the presence of nuclear-powered cruisers is not a novelty. In a bygone era, the United States operated nine nuclear cruisers. Yet, the soaring maintenance costs led to their decommissioning in the 1990s. Notably, the most illustrious among them, the USS Long Beach, paled in size compared to the Kirov-class cruisers. Hence, Pyotr Veliki, the sole active vessel of this class, stands as the contemporary embodiment of a nuclear battleship, securing its position as the largest nuclear-powered warship globally, second only to aircraft carriers. The intrigue deepens when one ponders the rationale behind the conspicuous smokestack adorning this nuclear-powered cruiser, reminiscent of conventional vessels. The answer lies in contingency planning. Contemplating a scenario where the nuclear reactor falters, the Soviets drew insights from their nuclear-powered icebreakers. They installed a secondary atomic reactor as a failsafe. Oil-burning boilers emerged as the ultimate backup to avert the ignominy of two consecutive reactor failures, enabling the ship to sail up to 1,000 miles at 17 knots. The colossal smokestack, therefore, serves a pragmatic purpose. However, the intrigue extends beyond mere functionality. The smoke emitted by Kirov-class battlecruisers is markedly less conspicuous than that of the Russian aircraft carrier Kuznetsov. Unveiling the truth behind seemingly dramatic images, those earlier pictures were, in fact, cleverly manipulated. A reverse search of the satellite image disclosed that the purported smoke was, in reality, emanating from the eruption of Mount Etna, or a blazing oil rig. A poignant reminder not to unquestionably trust everything encountered on the vast realm of the Internet. Beneath the surface lies an extraordinary engineering feat. The two nuclear reactors housed on Pyotr Veliki, bestowing an unparalleled decade-long operational range upon the vessel. Each reactor generates a staggering 103 megawatts of power, adequate to sustain a city of 150,000 inhabitants. Despite the enormity of this output, it unveils an often overlooked reality. The Kirov-class battlecruisers fall short of attaining their maximum speed solely on nuclear power. With a sustained rate of 20 knots achievable through nuclear means, the vessel must invoke the combined nuclear and steam propulsion system to reach its zenith at 33 knots, harmonizing the forces of nuclear and boiler power. In the grand narrative of naval prowess, the title Russia Nuclear Powerful Warship encapsulates the saga of the Kirov-class battlecruiser, a testament to technological might, strategic foresight, and the ceaseless pursuit of maritime dominance. However, this doesn't represent the primary constraint, as this vessel seldom navigates at its maximum velocity. The fundamental impediment lies in the company it keeps, other naval vessels. The Admiral Kuznetsov, task force rate curtails Pyotr Veliki's highest achievable speed, typically cruising at a sedate 18 knots. The initial stipulation for a speed exceeding 30 knots originated from the concept that the Kirov class would be a protective shield for the Ulyanovsk nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. Alas, the construction of the airline was halted with the dissolution of the Soviet Union. Maritime Strategy Now, Delving into the motivation behind the Soviet construction of this nuclear behemoth demands attention. Before unveiling the answer, if you harbor a keen interest in experiencing the nuances of the Kirov class, consider immersing yourself in the gaming world of War Thunder is the proud sponsor of this video. The original Kirov class cruiser, 
a historical marvel among the 2,000-plus authentically recreated vehicles in War Thunder, offers an opportunity to engage in both arcade battles and tactical wars. While the 1930s Kirov class, though smaller than its contemporary counterpart, featured three 777.1-inch guns, its noteworthy maximum speed soared to an impressive 36 knots. The mouse aim mode provides a user-friendly and intuitive introduction to the game for newcomers. This facilitates a gradual immersion into the gaming experience. Beyond naval encounters, players can also partake in Air Force and Army scenarios. The game's physics offers a realistic touch, and the best part is you don't need a high-end gaming rig. Whether you prefer a PC, Xbox, or PlayStation, War Thunder ensures a fully cross-platform experience. To sweeten the deal, exclusive bonuses await including a premium tank, aircraft and ship, 100,000 silver lions, and a seven-day premium account. Simply register using the link in the description to claim your distinctive bonus. Cold War ERA Expansion. Venturing back to the early 1960s, the US the Navy embarked on a groundbreaking initiative with the commissioning of its first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier, USS Enterprise, and two nuclear-powered cruisers, USS Long Beach, and USS Bainbridge. This historic trio constituted the US Navy's Task Force One is also renowned as the Nuclear Navy. As part of Operation Sea Orbit, these nuclear vessels circumnavigated the globe for an astounding 65 days, maintaining an impressive speed of 26 knots without refueling. This triumph exerted significant pressure on Soviet leadership, propelling them to develop their equivalent, Task Force One. Initially, the Soviets developed two distinct, albeit smaller, nuclear-powered ships, a dedicated anti-submarine warship and a destroyer specializing in air defense. Eventually, these disparate projects amalgamated into a singular colossal entity under the banner of Project 1144 Orlan. The Kirov-class saga. Despite laying the keels for five Kirov-class ships, only four reached completion. Pyotr Veliki, the final one, entered service under the Russian Commission in 1998. During the 1980s, when the Kirov-class ships joined the Soviet fleet and the US Navy resurrected four Iowa-class battleships, not merely in response to the commissioning of Kirov, but primarily driven by President Reagan's ambitious vision of a 600-ship navy. Post the disintegration of the Soviet Union, the trio of Kirov-class ships found themselves relegated to reserve status due to the exorbitant operational and maintenance costs. In a parallel move, that the United States bid a final farewell to its quartet of Iowa battleships in the early 1990s. The architectural blueprint of this nuclear leviathan adhered to a straightforward principle. If there was unoccupied space, Soviet designers diligently filled it. Beyond its formidable armaments, a topic to be explored in detail shortly. The vessel encompasses a labyrinth of 20 kilometers of hallways, 140 staterooms catering to officers, and 32 berthing areas for sailors, accommodating a crew of 744. While the ship boasts two saunas and a modest pool, the absence of grandma is regrettable. However, daily red wine rationing sweetens the sailor's routine. In essence, the tale of the Kirov-class battlecruiser unfolds as a captivating saga of Cold War era, naval dynamics, technological prowess, and strategic recalibrations. The APT title, Russia's Nuclear Powerful Warship, merely scratches the surface of this maritime narrative. Tipping the scales at a formidable 25,160 tons, Pyotr Veliki boasts a size three times that of an Arleigh Burke destroyer. Yet, it only amounts to about half the heft of World War II-era behemoths like the Bismarck, 49,500 tons, and the Iowa class, 60,000 tons. However, its relatively diminished size compared to these bygone battleships doesn't reduce the ship's lethal capabilities. Quite the contrary. The Soviet architects meticulously crafted the Kirov-class battlecruisers to incorporate every conceivable naval weapon into their design. They spared no expense, ensuring every item on the naval armament menu found its place. For perspective, consider that the US Navy's Ali Burke-class destroyers feature a modest 96 VLS cells. 
In comparison, Ticonderoga class cruisers boast a slightly more substantial 122 VLS cells. It's worth noting that evolved Sea Sparrow missiles are quad packed inside a single VLS cell. Both classes also carry up to eight Harpoon missiles, and the Arleigh Burke adds a Sea Ram system armed with 11 missiles. In stark contrast, the Kirov battlecruiser proudly carries an astounding arsenal of up to 386 missiles of diverse types, dwarfing the armament of US Navy cruisers and destroyers. The pièce de résistance among the battlecruiser's armaments is its 20 colossal missile launch cells housing P-700 granite anti-ship cruise missiles. Each missile, weighing approximately seven tons, can be equipped with a 1,600 Laubis explosive warhead or a 500 kiloton nuclear bomb capable of reaching targets up to 388 miles away. The Soviets boldly claim that the sheer size of these missiles renders interception impossible, asserting that even a direct hit would not deter the rocket from its trajectory due to inertia. While I lack expertise in rocket science, I harbor skepticism regarding this claim. Nevertheless, what remains irrefutable is the ability to launch granite missiles in swarm mode, grouping them in sets of four or eight. In this strategy, one rocket ascends higher than the others to identify and allocate targets to the remaining missiles based on priority, ensuring the highest probability of neutralizing the top priority target. The Russians assert that their lone active Kirov-class cruiser, Pyotr Veliki, can obliterate any aircraft carrier globally within minutes using granite missiles. Despite the awe-inspiring nature of granite missiles, it's crucial to note that they hail from 1970s technology. Skepticism abounds in the West, with widespread belief that the modern Aegis combat system aboard US Navy cruisers and destroyers could effortlessly intercept all 20 missiles if launched. To date, no granite missile has ever seen combat. The peculiar question arises, why do the Kirov-class battlecruisers launch cells undergo seawater flooding before missile launches? The rationale lies in the initial design of granite missiles, conceived for submarines, specifically as underwater-launched projectiles, rather than embarking on a costly and time-consuming redesign of the launch system, Soviet engineers opted for a cost-effective solution by integrating the existing submarine launch system into the battlecruiser. This adaptation necessitated the launch cells to be flooded, mirroring the submarine launch process. Adding to the arsenal, a distinctive weapon system aboard the battlecruiser is the RPK-6 Vodopad, which translates to waterfall in Russian. This torpedo tube launched missile emerges from one of the ship's 10 tubes, is propelled into the water, and within seconds is driven by a solid fuel rocket engine to traverse up to 31 miles to its target. The missile then deploys either a nuclear depth charge or a torpedo, both aimed at obliterating an enemy submarine. Addressing the realm of submarines, the battlecruiser accommodates three Ka-27 and Ka-31 helicopters within its hangar beneath the stern deck, equipped for tracking enemy submarines. But what about defense against incoming missile attacks? To say that the battlecruiser can defend itself would be an understatement given its multi-layered anti-air defense system. The title, Russia Nuclear Powerful Warship, merely scratches the surface of the formidable capabilities encapsulated within this maritime juggernaut. The formidable Kirov class showcases its prowess by including the S-300 Fort Missile System, a land-based variant skillfully integrated beneath the hull to fortify the battlecruiser's long-range air defense capabilities. Astounding rotating drums on Pyotr Velikai House, an impressive arsenal of 94 long-range missiles, each possessing a staggering maximum range of 93 miles. Expanding the battlecruiser's defense capabilities further, it features 128 Kinzhal surface-to-air missiles designed for mid-range air defense with an impressive range of up to 7.5 miles. Distinguishing itself with an array of six Cortic close-in weapon systems, the battlecruiser is a fortress on the move, ready to obliterate incoming targets up to 2.5 miles away. These systems boast two 30 milliton rotary cannons, firing at a mind-boggling rate of 9,000 rounds per minute, complemented by eight missile tubes 
capable of intercepting targets up to five miles away. The Russians boldly assert that Kortik's effectiveness in annihilating incoming threats falls between 96% and 99%. As if the battlecruiser's arsenal weren't formidable enough, it houses a colossal AK-130 dual-barrel 130mm cannon, capable of launching 90 projectiles up to 14 miles away within a minute. This equates to approximately four tons of metals and explosives being expelled from the barrel, showcasing the ship's overwhelming firepower. The cannon operates seamlessly, with full automation driven by advanced computerization, factoring in the ship's speed and the motion of the waves. In a computer malfunction, manual firing capability ensures a fail-safe mechanism. Each Kirov-class battlecruiser is a testament to continual advancements, with slight variations in their construction and armaments. Embracing a philosophy of constant improvement, new weapon systems are promptly integrated into the latest ship of the class. This approach endures, which is evident in the refurbishment of the Admiral Nakimov battlecruiser. The vessel can carry caliber cruise missiles, P-800 Onyx anti-ship missiles, and the Panzer M anti-air missile system. Future plans include the installation of the Russian hypersonic missile, Tsirkon, on Admiral Nakimov, underscoring the commitment to arm these maritime giants comprehensively. However, the magnitude of a more giant and heavily weaponized ship raises concerns, transforming it into the highest priority target. While two smaller cruisers could carry equivalent missiles, the strategic landscape is complicated, as adversaries must now contend with hitting two targets rather than one. Despite the awe-inspiring capabilities of Kirov-class battlecruisers, the price of their mightiness is significant maintenance costs. Following the collapse of the Soviet Union, economic constraints compelled Russia to mothball three out of the four nuclear Leviathans. In a decisive move, it was determined in 2019 that the two reserve battlecruisers, Admiral Ushakov and Admiral Lazarev, would face scrapping due to the exorbitant costs associated with modernization. Meanwhile, the third battlecruiser, Admiral Nakimov, has patiently awaited its return to the Russian Navy since 1997, with reintegration anticipated in 2024. The fate of Pyotr Veliki took a different turn, with reports in 2023 suggesting its potential scrapping, driven by the prohibitive costs associated with refurbishment. For those intrigued by the prowess of these formidable warships, the opportunity to experience a virtual encounter with the Kirov class awaits in War Thunder, a free vehicle combat game compatible with PC, Xbox and PlayStation. Exclusive bonuses beckon for not what you think viewers, providing an immersive introduction to the unparalleled might of Russia's nuclear-powered warships.